Hello and welcome back to another episode of Hollywood Wargaming. And today we are going to be continuing our bolt action unit guide with some of the more niche HQ units, which in today's video will be covering medics and ambulance. Now, medics take up their own unique slot in the reinforced platoon. They're not really competing with anyone else. However, they will be competing with ambulances for the same spot. So basically, you have to choose between that infantry medic on foot or the ambulance vehicle, which is usually a soft-skinned truck or perhaps a half-track. And your standard reinforced platoon is only going to have one medic slot, so it's not really that hotly contested. But you definitely can't spam them either. Not necessarily that you would want to. So, starting off with our standard foot slogging medic, we are going to have your standard kind of HQ build here, where it's going to be a single model that you buy, and in most situations will be able to be equipped with up to two extra assistants alongside them, who actually do change how the squad interacts with its primary function, which is somewhat interesting, but we'll get back to that later. And your standard medic is going to come in at 23 points for regular, which is relatively cheap, and then 30 points for veteran. Now, I went looking for an inexperienced medic throughout the different army list, and I don't think there is the option to take one. In fact, I don't think you'd want an inexperienced medic operating on your guys on the battlefield anyways, so maybe that's for the better. But you are going to be stuck with that regular or veteran option there. And in fact, some factions are only going to have an option for veteran medics, but it's not terribly steep at just 30 points. And of course, you can add up to two assistants most of the time for 10 points per model at regular or 13 points at veteran. Pretty standard stuff there. So your medic's retinue can be as cheap as just 23 points for a regular medic, or get all the way up to 56 points for a veteran medic with two cronies alongside him, which at face value is overall pretty cheap. However, all models in this unit are going to be equipped with either a pistol or no weapon at all, and really there's no reason not to take the pistol here. But as you'll see as we move into the special rules, you're probably not going to be using it anyways, maybe once every blue moon. And by blue moon, I mean like a blue moon that is uh, eclipsing the sun and blocking out the sky. That kind of rare. Because needless to say, the medics are not here to be doing harm. They are, of course, a support unit meant to keep your dudes alive. So the special rule that lets medics do what they're meant to do is basically going to be a 6-inch bubble within any member of the medic squad, including any of the assistants, to gain what is commonly referred to in wargaming as a 6-plus feel-no-pain. And for those of you who don't play 40k or perhaps aren't familiar with that term, it basically means that when you receive a wound onto this unit, you can roll a d6 for each wound received, and on each roll of a 6, you will ignore one wound. An example, let's say that we have an infantry squad within 6 inches of a medic that receives some incoming small arms fire, and they take 5 wounds. Now, normally that would mean 5 guys are going to be removed from the squad, but because the medic's there, we're going to roll 5 dice, and for each result of a 6, we're going to block wounds. So let's say we roll our 5 dice and we get two 6s there. That means instead of taking 5 wounds, we're only going to take 3. It's basically another layer of damage mitigation, albeit a bit of a Hail Mary that comes at the end of the pipeline. Now, what's interesting about this in bolt action is that it is going to be an aura effect of that 6-inch radius, which is rather rare in this game outside of the officers. And also the fact that you can measure from any member within the medic unit. So if you do take those two additional assistants, you are technically increasing the aura of this unit's effect. Effectively taking it from a 6-inch bubble to a 9-inch bubble, although that's just kind of being broad with the statement there. But it definitely makes those extra models alongside your medic very tempting, especially if you're trying to create like a Death Star. And let's say you have three Grenadier squads all blobbed up and you don't want to lose those very expensive veteran troops. And when I say it all like that, it seems like a pretty viable strategy to run medics, especially when you have top-heavy, expensive elite infantry, and you plan on blobbing them up around objectives or near officers. I mean, why not take a 23-point medic and get a feel-no-pain? You save two veteran models and you've already made your points worth. Well, there are some caveats when it comes to this feel-no-pain bubble. First, this cannot be used on exceptional damage when your opponent makes that double six on the wound roll, which really sucks because that's usually when they're removing the most important models, aka the most expensive ones in your unit, very often the NCO or a light machine gunner. But okay, exceptional damage happens on a double six roll and it's not the most common thing. But unfortunately, medics can also not use that six plus feel no pain on wounds taken in melee combat. Which is a bummer because that could totally change the tide of a melee fight where whoever has the most casualties instantly retreats. But wait, there is unfortunately more. Most significantly, medics cannot be used to heal any damage taken by heavy weapons. 
Now, if you're confused to what the definition of a heavy weapon is, it's basically any weapon in the game that has a penetration value. That includes heavy machine guns, auto cannons, flamethrowers, any template weapon including high explosives, and pretty much all the stuff in the game that does most of the killing. So yeah, for any experienced bolt action player, when you look at the medic slot, you're probably with it until you got to that point. Now, small arms like light machine guns and submachine guns definitely do a lot of killing in the game. And as I said earlier, if a regular medic does manage to save something like two veteran soldiers, it has made its points back. But what if those two soldiers that get killed are the medic itself? So, medics do have a rule called Geneva Convention, which means that they cannot actually fight in combat unless they're being attacked. And that very specifically applies to close combat and being assaulted, meaning those pistols can only be used to retaliate against the charge. But, as we all know, pistols are only range 6, and if you're within 6 inches of a unit, they don't usually get to react, so that means there has to be some funky thing going on with assaulting into buildings for them to even react with said pistols, and hence, blue, blue, moon. And if your medic is being charged, things are probably extremely pear-shaped, so things are probably not just looking bad for your three-man medic squad, but probably your entire battle plan at that point. The Geneva Convention special rule also means that your medics cannot count for capturing objectives, but do note that nowhere in this special rule does it say that medics cannot be fired upon. Now, I'm no historian. I don't know what happened everywhere in World War II. I was not there. But I heard that there was a few war crimes. And Warlord Games has very intentionally left it open for medics to be able to be targeted and destroyed by enemy units. So naturally, if you see a big elite Death Star waddling towards you up the battlefield, it will be in most players' best interest to start targeting the pillars of what makes that Death Star so potent, being the officers and the medics who are supporting it. And quite frankly, it does not take a lot of firepower to kill three infantry models. And now we go back to the great officer debate of do you take one extra crony alongside you to keep the small team special rule, or are you going to take that third guy to further increase the bubble of your aura? Now, it is worth noting that nowhere in the rulebook does it say that the medic needs to be within the line of sight of the units that it's healing. Perhaps there is a fact somewhere that I'm missing that says that, but to my knowledge that isn't the case, so you could in theory cheese the medic a bit by keeping them out of line of sight. But at that point you are locking your battle strategy down to the chances of terrain being in your favor, or more likely bringing a large enough vehicle for the medic to hide behind. But at that point you're getting pretty damn cheesy. I'm not saying you can't play that way, but it's a tournament thing, I think. I really do not want to encourage anyone to play like that in a casual game. Sure, if you have a few veteran units like hunkered down in ruins, and then you have a medic nearby who's kind of hiding, keeping out of the fire, that's fine. But if you're marching this, this hell march up the field with, let's say, a tiger tank with an officer and then a medic hiding behind it completely out of line of sight with two lorries on its flank, then you're not going to make a lot of friends playing bolt action, I'll be honest. But even then, if you are running a hyper meta strategy like that, you still have to maneuver across the battlefield. People can still flank you once you push up far enough and potentially take your medic out with a good hand of dice. It's definitely not impossible. And if you're completely risk adverse to exposing your flank, then you're probably not going to have your Death Star blob pushing up very far, and your enemy can maybe take you out that way. But this is now turning into a video on Death Star builds more so than medics themselves. So I'll go ahead and cap it out by saying this. I think medics are decent at what they do if you're trying to keep elite infantry alive, and I mean really expensive elite infantry. I'm talking paratroopers with two submachine guns and two light machine guns elite. But the irony there is that if you are running an elite list like that, then the chances are that your medic squad is actually going to be one of your only 12 dice in the bag. And when the medic itself gets killed, you are going to be removing a dice from your elite list, thus hindering your activation, which is in itself counterintuitive. On top of that, you're going to see that your medic's simply not going to be able to do anything against high explosive firepower that's going to be raining down on your elite infantry. Again, punishing static play where your medic might be able to hide. And also, your medic's going to have a very bad day if your enemy is fielding a sniper. And all of this, all of this, mind you, is for a simple 6 plus feel no pain in a 6 inch bubble. That is a mere 16.66 repeating chance per wound. Now, that's not bad when you start considering that maybe you're going to be rolling on 10 wounds. But what's throwing 10 wounds around in bolt action aside from things like high explosive, which we know is a heavy weapon, which the medics don't affect? 
If you think about it, two squads dug in at a distance trading small arms blows, it's going to take a few turns to rack up 10 wounds. So aside from the stray situation where you see a band of guys with some machine guns run around the corner and pepper your squad, I think you'll find that medics simply struggle to justify their presence on the battlefield and their investment in points, even at that lower cost. And this definitely seems to be the case based off my experiences running medics in the past. In an ideal world, the medic would work out with that feel no pain, but an ideal world does not have Hans on the back of a Kettenkrad with a flamethrower running up your flank. So overall, my advice with medics is, yes, if you're running a very points-heavy Death Star, go ahead and take one. Maybe make him a veteran and bring two guys alongside him, see how it works out. If you're lucky with your dice, maybe he will justify his presence, and maybe your opponent will simply not have the list equipped to deal with him. Alternatively, if you want to have some veteran units dig into ruins or something like that, maybe take a regular medic by himself and keep him nearby them. At that point, he doesn't have to do a lot to justify his presence, and he's not going to impact your list that badly. But I would say to be very conscious of your order dice when building said list, and make sure you're not going to feel the absence of that dice when you lose your medic. But that is going to move us along to our ambulance. And these are actually going to vary nation to nation on points, but they're usually going to be either a soft skin truck, which of course is going to have a armor value of 6+, plus, meaning small arms can wound it, or it's going to be something like a half-track or universal carrier, which will have that tankette armored profile of 7+, plus, which will keep you safe from small arms fire. However, they are often open-topped, so you'll still be able to get pins from small arms, which could be a problem for movement and keeping up with the units you're trying to heal. And these are going to rest in the 50 to 75 point range, with the soft skin vehicles being lower, around 50, and things like your Hanomag half-track being at 75 for regular and 90 for veteran, with a few different national variants resting in between there. I don't really want to get into the details of it. These are simply going to be vehicles that share the same medic special rule, that 6-inch feel-no-pain aura, and there's a few give-and-takes here compared to your regular medic. First of all, obviously, they are more expensive. With that higher price, you're of course getting a few advantages, one of them being mobility, which I don't actually think is that big of a deal, because you're there to support infantry who are already moving slower than you, you don't need to outpace them, and I don't think your battle plan is going to have your ambulance running in between different units to provide that aura, especially considering that these are more or less treated like transports, where if an enemy unit is closer than a friendly unit, they do count as being destroyed, so in my opinion, that extra speed is negligible. But of course, one of the biggest draws here is going to be more durability. Of course, earlier I was doing a lot of groaning about the medics being easily removed from the battlefields. However, it is worth noting that infantry can take down orders, where vehicles cannot. They can also hide out of line of sight, which is much harder for vehicles. And very simply put, if your opponent has something like a medium anti-tank gun with no other targets, it's going to be very, very happy to shoot at this ambulance. On top of that, the soft skin vehicles here are still going to be able to be destroyed by small arms fire. And while they will only be wounding on a 6 with small arms, they'll have better to hit chances on this larger target than they would a small team. And as we all know in Wargaming, the pipeline of dice means the first one is the most important. So in a funny way, that small two-man infantry team can often be more durable than the soft skin vehicle in practicality. And because of all that, I gotta say, the soft skin vehicle ambulances are definitely the biggest bust of all the medic variants. And I think it's just 50 points that's pretty much never going to make its points back throughout the course of the match. Now, things do get interesting when we look at some of the 7 plus armored variants, as they are completely immune to small arms fire now. And that means your opponent will have to focus fire with something with an AP value in order to destroy it. But as my experienced bolt action players know, those big guns are always looking for a boxing match. And unless you can neutralize some of their AT weapons while still threatening your opponent with your own armor, the ambulance is just going to get opened up like a tin can. And even if you end up in a scenario where your opponent is shooting a medium anti-tank gun at your Hanomag ambulance, and they're missing turn after turn after turn, you're still in a pretty steep uphill battle for that unit to make its 75 points back. You will have to save 5.7, so more or less 6 veteran models throughout the course of a game with this ambulance. And mind you, that has to be from small arms fire, it can't be from high explosives, in order for this ambulance to justify its presence. And yes, maybe you can throw in a scenario where you revive 3 or 4 veteran models, and they're on an objective, and they hold that objective, and that ends up winning you the game. But now we're making up scenarios with a lot of variables in it, and at the end of the day, I could just ask you, would seven more regular infantry have done the trick also? 
And really, I think the only other decent thing I can say about ambulances is that their bigger footprint on the board is going to kind of give you a bigger aura of effect for that feel no pain. But ultimately, they're going to have to stick around for that to come into play to begin with. So at the end of the day, I just don't think ambulances are worth it in any capacity. I think they would need to either be brought down significantly in points or perhaps offer better bonuses than your standard medic. Perhaps a uh, 12 inch radius instead of a 6 inch radius for the aura. Or hey, perhaps let them heal people who have been hit by heavy weapons to represent better medical equipment being carried by the vehicle that medics can't carry on their persons. Just something like that would go a long way to make the ambulance a more tempting unit. But ultimately, at the end of the day, medics and ambulances do feel like a bit of an afterthought unit in the Warlord rulebook. It's cool that they're there and you can make them work. And I'm sure players out there have used them to good effects. But if you can't tell, my own experiences have not been great with medics. I can probably count on a single hand how many models have been saved over my years playing bolt action via that feel no pain aura. But let me know what you guys think about medics in the comments section down below. Do you run them often? Do you like using them with Death Stars? I'm willing to bet that at least one of you have had a game where your medic has been absolute MVP, rolling hot sixes all night. Let me know in the comments section down below. As always, thanks for watching the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I have started a Patreon for the channel, which is going to allow me to put more time into the channel and help me get better equipment and put out more content. Any support is appreciated, and there are various tiers with various advantages, and I will hopefully implement more in the future. But another way you can help is always by subscribing, turning on notifications, and leaving a like, all the fun YouTube stuff. And as always, until next time, take care.